How well do you remember 1997? Titanic was selling out cinemas everywhere, Tony Blair became Prime Minister, the Spice Girls begun their crusade of girl power with their song Wannabe, Channel 5 was launched in the UK, and Princess Diana tragically lost her life in a car accident. With all of that going on, it is of little surprise that few of us recall an event that took place on the 1st of January that year, the biggest change to UK driving licences in decades. This change meant that anyone taking their test in the year 1997 and beyond would not automatically have the same rights to tow caravans, trailers and horse boxes as those who passed their driving tests before this date. Those who passed their tests before 1997 could drive a motor vehicle and trailer combination up to a maximum authorised mass of 8,250 kilograms. Put simply, they didn't even have to think about what they were hooking up to the back of their vehicle, providing that the tow vehicle was capable enough to pull it as the upper weight limit was so high. So what was this change and why, more than 20 years later, are people still being caught out by it? The rules and regulations can appear tricky at first, but rest assured that this video is here to guide you through the rules as simply as possible, making use of real life examples. Firstly, this advice only applies to those drivers who pass their driving tests after the 1st of January 1997. If you pass before this, then you don't really need to worry about this video, but you will still find it interesting. Secondly, the focus of this video is to give you the knowledge you will need to help you decide whether you are legally able to tow the car and caravan, trailer or horse box combination you have. For simplicity's sake, some of the examples given ignore the 85% rule for towing, as this will be covered in a later video. Thirdly, you might like to grab a pen and paper now, as there are exercises to complete throughout the video to test your knowledge. Quick disclaimer though, I am not a qualified DVSA assessor, nor do I hold any legal qualifications in law surrounding licensing, rules or regulations. This is the law as I understand it, which may be inaccurate or incorrect, so don't sue me. So, let's start off by getting some bits of jargon out of the way first. Trailer and vehicle. The first bit of jargon is straightforward. The Road Vehicles Construction and Use Regulations 1986 items 13 through 18 describe a trailer as a vehicle drawn by a motor vehicle. This also tells us that a vehicle can be a trailer, horse box or caravan. If an engine is in the vehicle, it is then described as a motor vehicle. For the purposes of keeping things simple, I will keep referring to caravans, though the information will equally apply to horse boxes as well as trailers. Mass in running order, load and maximum authorised mass. These next three items are best understood together. To help get our heads around the differences between these, I've created this graphic. In the bottom right hand corner of the triangle, we have mass in running order. I'd like you to focus on the phrase running order just for a moment, as it will help you to remember what it means. In English, when we describe something as being in running order, we mean that it works. A car, when it first comes out of the factory, works perfectly and so could be described as being in great running order. Therefore, the mass in running order is simply how much the car weighed when it came out of the factory, plus 175 kilogram driver and fuel. Of course, once you get your lovely new car, you put stuff in it, like the kids, luggage, the pet dog, and you get the picture. This is called the load. Each motor vehicle has a limit on the amount of weight that it can safely carry. At the top of the triangle, we have the maximum authorised mass, which tells you the maximum the car is allowed to weigh when fully loaded. This is calculated by adding together the mass in running order and the load. Most of us rarely think about the maximum authorised mass of our vehicles when going away on holiday or when loading them up with flat packed furniture at IKEA, though I'm sure that you've all seen hilarious pictures of grossly overloaded vehicles on the internet. However, it's actually quite a handy number. Let's say you're touring France on your own and a vineyard has an amazing deal on wine that you can't resist and you would like to take as many bottles home with you as you can. You could calculate the load of your vehicle and then divide that weight by the weight of a single bottle of wine to find out how many bottles you could actually carry in your car. 
and if you're interested, a bottle of wine weighs about 1.25 kilograms. To calculate the load of your vehicle, you would do maximum authorized mass, subtract mass in running order, which would equal your load. Perhaps you need to ship your empty car abroad and the shipping company needs to know its weight to calculate the shipping cost. You could calculate this by doing maximum authorized mass, subtract load, which would equal your mass in running order. I'm sure that you get the picture about how to calculate these things using the diagram. The more important reason why it's quite a handy number is for UK law enforcement. Let's imagine that the police stop you in your wine laden vehicle back in the UK. If the officer suspects that your vehicle has been overloaded, they'll escort you to the nearest weighbridge to check. If the weight on the weighbridge is higher than your maximum authorised mass of your vehicle, then you're in big trouble, likely to receive points and a fine, and you will not be able to continue your journey until you've decreased the overall weight of your vehicle. On newer vehicles, you can find the maximum authorised mass and mass and running order numbers on your vehicle registration certificate the V5. It's named slightly differently, but you can see the numbers you need. If your vehicle's information isn't listed on the V5, then you will need to look for a sticker with the information on, which may possibly be in the door shim. Otherwise, check your owner's manual. Now, coming back to towing. Before 1997, people with driving licenses didn't really have to worry about towing weights like we said earlier. Generally, for them, so long as the car they were driving weighed more than what they were towing, then everything was fine, as the upper weight limit for towing was so high. However, for us post-1997 license holders, this is not the case, and if you, like me, passed your driving test after the 1st of January 1997, and you plan to tow any large trailer, horse box or caravan, it's incredibly important that you understand the law surrounding towing. So let's start off by looking at an example, but before we do, please note that some of the figures in the examples have been made up to illustrate the law, so if you do happen to own or drive a Mazda 6, then do check your vehicle documents for the correct weights. So let's imagine that Johnny here drives a Mazda 6. The Mazda has a mass in running order of 1,500 kilograms. Its load capacity is 600 kilograms, giving it a maximum authorized mass of 2,100 kilograms. Johnny decides to start towing a caravan, but knows that he has to check his weights as he passed his test after the 1st of January 1997. Johnny finds a beautiful Bailey Ranger caravan that has a maximum technically permissible laden mass of 1,298 kilograms. Johnny says, ah oh, no, not more jargon. Yes, Johnny, more jargon, but this one is easily overcome. Maximum technically permissible laden mass. The MT PLM. The maximum technically permissible laden mass tells the user of any trailer, be it a horse box, caravan, or indeed just a normal trailer, how much the trailer is allowed to weigh when fully loaded. It's essentially the same as the maximum authorized mass for a motor vehicle. See, I told you it was simple. Getting back to Johnny, he can now start working out whether he can pair the Bailey caravan he is looking at with his Mazda 6 and drive it on his standard post-1997 Category B car license. To do this, Johnny has found out that he has to calculate something called the gross train weight. Gross train weight. Whenever you attach any form of trailer to any motor vehicle, you are creating a train. Think of the motor vehicle as the engine at the front and trailer as a carriage. The gross train weight describes the maximum possible weights of the motor vehicle and trailer. It is easily calculated by adding the maximum authorised mass of the motor vehicle to the maximum technically permissible laden mass of the trailer. This next bit is important. For those of us who passed our driving tests after 1997, we must ensure that our gross train weight is less than 3,500 kilograms. Otherwise, we are towing illegally. Johnny calculates the gross train weight of his Mazda 6 and the Bailey Ranger Caravan. So, Mazda 6 has a maximum authorised mass of 2,100 kilograms. The Bailey Caravan has a maximum technically permissible laden mass of 1,298 kilograms. Pause the video and calculate Johnny's gross train weight. Can he legally tow this setup on his post-1997 Category B car licence? The 
The answer? Yes! Johnny can legally tow this setup on his post-1997 Category B car license. The gross train weight of this setup equals 3,398 kilograms, meaning that he is within the overall 3,500 kilogram limit for his license. All Johnny needs to do now is buy the caravan, get on site, pitch up and relax. Let's imagine that a couple of years have passed and Johnny is really enjoying his caravan holidays, but has sold his Master 6. Johnny wants a more powerful, heavier vehicle, with a bigger engine. He starts looking at a Land Rover Discovery. He likes it so much that he buys it and the very next weekend he excitedly sets off again with the same Bailey Ranger caravan. Along the way, he is stopped by police who check Johnny's license and calculate his gross train weight. Land Rover Discovery, maximum authorised mass, 3,130 kilograms. Bailey Caravan, maximum, technically permissible laden mass, 1,298 kilograms. Pause the video and calculate Johnny's gross train weight. Can he legally tow this setup on his post-1997 Category B car licence? The answer? No. Johnny cannot legally tow this setup on his post-1997 Category B car license because the gross train weight of this setup equals 4,428 kilograms, which exceeds the overall 3,500 kilogram limit for his license. The police officer informs Johnny that he is over the 3,500 kilogram towing limit for his license. The officer advises Johnny to arrange recovery of his caravan, as he is unlicensed to tow it any further. Johnny is fined £1,000 and receives three penalty points on his license. In this example, Johnny did not take into consideration the greater maximum authorised mass of the Land Rover before choosing this vehicle. Here's another scenario for you. Sarah needs to move a large settee from her old house to her new house. She drives a Dacia Duster. She remembers from the sale brochure that her Dacia Duster can tow 1,500 kilograms, so looks for a trailer that is both long and wide enough to carry her sofa. She finds a local company who hire car transporter trailers by the day, which, due to their large flat beds, are ideal for moving her sofa with. Arriving at the rental company, Sarah inspects the plates on the trailer and reads that the trailer she wants has a mass in running order of 750 kilograms. Sarah thinks that this is great because she knows that her car can tow 1,500 kilograms and the sofa won't weigh more than 100 kilograms, meaning that she is safely within her car's 1,500 kilogram towing limit. She knows that her car has a maximum authorised mass of 1,795 kilograms by looking at its information sticker. She calculates that even with the trailer weight of 750 kilograms, as well as allowing a generous 150 kilograms for the sofa, that she will still be well under the 3,500 kilogram gross train weight limit for her license, as her total only comes to 2,695 kilograms. Sarah rents the trailer and sets off. Along the way, she is stopped by police, who check Sarah's license and calculate her gross train weight. Dacia Duster, maximum authorised mass, 1,795 kilograms. Car transporter trailer, Mass and running order, 750 kilograms. Sofa, being the load, is 150 kilograms, giving Sarah a gross train weight of 2,695 kilograms. Pause the video now and consider Sarah's towing calculations. Can she legally tow this setup on her post-1997 Category B car license? Well done to those of you who recognise that this was a trick question. Sarah misunderstood the rules and regulations. Sarah's mistake was to calculate her gross train weight from the mass in running order of the trailer, adding on what she thought the weight of her load would be, rather than the maximum technically permissible laden mass. Had she done so, then she would have calculated her gross train weight to be far in excess of what her post-1997 category car licence allows, not to mention exceeding the tow-it limit on a Dacia Duster by over 2,000 kilograms. Dacia Duster maximum authorised mass is, like we said before, 1,795 kilograms. The car transporter trailer 
has a maximum technically permissible laden mass of 3,500 kilograms, giving Sarah a gross train weight of 5,295 kilograms. When informed of the infringement, Sarah argued that she was only towing 750 kilograms as her trailer was empty, therefore her actual gross train weight was less than 3,500 kilograms. However, the police officer informed her that, in the eyes of the law, she was going equipped to potentially carry a load greater than her vehicle was able to as well as her license enabled her to. You may think that Sarah's penalty is harsh, but there are numerous examples every year of motor vehicles and trailers being overloaded, both purposefully and accidentally, that then result in accidents. The trailer rental company should have checked Sarah's license, explained that she would not be licensed to tow and refuse the rental. However, they either do not know the law or they do not care, as if their trailer gets impounded and consequently not returned, they can charge the value of the trailer to Sarah's credit card, which she left them as a deposit. How to tow heavier stuff Johnny appealed the charge against him and at court was heard by a sympathetic judge who instructed him to attend a driver improvement course instead of receiving the penalty points on his license. After the course, Johnny booked the driver training and driving test to get his category B plus E entitlement on his driving license, often referred to as the trailer test. He learned from his instructor and passed his trailer test, which now allows him to drive a motor vehicle with a maximum authorised mass of up to 3,500 kilograms, to tow a trailer with a maximum technically permissible laden mass of up to 3,500 kilograms, and to have a gross train weight of 7,000 kilograms. Now, Johnny can tow his Bailey Ranger caravan legally with his Land Rover. He could even choose to buy a larger caravan in the future, should he choose to do so. Top tips on staying legal. Trust no one. Despite the new rules having existed for more than 20 years, there remains a lot of confusion about them. There have been numerous cases of employees being caught for towing related offences, even where the employer has received and checked their licence and given the employee the OK. Be especially careful when towing with vans. Due to vans having a large load capacity, they can often easily, even with small caravans, put you over your gross train weight limit. Don't let anyone tell you that it's fine because the trailer's only half full, mate. Remember, the going equipped phrase and that gross train weight are calculated by the maximum technically permissible laden mass of the trailer, not its load. Sometimes, the plates will use different terms for the maximum authorised mass or the maximum technically permissible laden mass. If in doubt, always suppose the largest number is the one you need, because it probably is. Check your motor vehicle's handbook to determine what the maximum towing weight is and stick to it. If looking at caravans to buy, know this information before you even step inside a caravan that's for sale, because if you find a caravan you really like, even if it's over your weight allowance, your heart is likely to overrule your head. Do the B plus E training and test. The training is worthwhile and having the test done means that you will not have to worry about being licensed. My personal thoughts on the license requirements for post-1997 Category B car license holders. I have saved my opinions on this topic until the end of the video, so if you've made it this far then well done. My thoughts are this, there are positives to this as well as negatives. Firstly, there is one overwhelming positive. The trailer specific training provides drivers with a higher level of competence than what would normally be ordinarily gained from just sitting the ordinary car driving test. For example, the training covers the correct couple and uncouple procedure, loading, road positioning as well as the dreaded reversing. In this sense, it is valuable in and of itself. However, for me, there are many negatives. Firstly, there has been a failure of successive governments, driver trainers, automobile associations, the police and caravan clubs to highlight the rules as they stand in a clear, coherent and easy to understand manner. This has resulted in a situation of confusion and misinformation amongst employers, individuals and even between different generations of the same family. Further adding to the confusion has been, until relatively recently, the absence of standardisation of terminology used within this field. Throughout this video, I've used terms consistent with those found on the gov.uk website. 
However, on the weight plates of older caravans, trailers and horse boxes, you will find different terms being used to describe the different weights. For example, our caravan was constructed in 1997 and uses the term gross vehicle weight rather than maximum technically permissible laden mass. Additionally, if the government brought in this change over a concern for road safety, then I feel it would have been right to have mandated that all drivers need to take the training and test in order to tow larger trailers. This mandate could have been delivered over a 10 year period, allowing everyone sufficient time to train and take the test. Furthermore, having to sit another driving test, quite possibly many years after having passed your first driving test, is quite off-putting to many people. I would rather see a system whereby the skills, knowledge and experience are passed over without the need for a formal test, in a similar format to the motorcycle CBT whereby after two days you are either deemed competent or advised to undertake further training. This would be far less pressure than a 45 minute driving test. I am certain that training and assessment delivered in this way would result in a greater uptake of participants. Additionally, the caravanning sector should be lobbying against anything that puts younger people off caravanning, especially as the hobby of caravanning desperately needs younger people to embrace it, otherwise it will become the preserve of those who have completed their trailer tests or those who were fortunate enough to be able to sit their tests before 1997. As I have already demonstrated, you can, of course, tow smaller setups that are under the 3,500 kg limit, but for many people with families including young children, a larger caravan is the better way to go and it doesn't take much to put you over that limit. Finally, the cost of completing the B plus E trailer test is expensive. The test fee alone, payable directly to the DVSA, is £115. A two-day training course typically costs around £400, which includes use of the instructor's motor vehicle and trailer. If you're a young family with two adult drivers wanting to start caravanning, it's a big chunk out of your caravan budget. Finally, I detest the idea of someone like Johnny, who upgraded his vehicle to make towing safer, being hit with fines and points straight away. It seems totally counterproductive to me. Right, we're almost done. All that's left to do is to set you some homework for this week. At the very end of this video, I have included photographs of different caravan weight plates. Your task is to calculate the gross train weight for each plate using your current car's maximum authorised mass. If your current car isn't suitable, then choose a tow car from the internet. For each weight plate, decide whether or not you'd be able to tow each setup on your post-1997 UK car licence. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you have, would you mind giving us a helping hand by giving us a like, consider subscribing or even leaving a comment. If you do leave us a comment, we read and reply to each comment we receive, so check back for your reply. If you know someone else that this video would be useful for, please share it with them to get the knowledge out there. Next time, we'll discuss the 85% rule for towing, which helps us match trailers to motor vehicles. Until then, take care and safe towing.